Uh, these young women went missing between July of 2007 and September of 2010. The man charged in three of the Gilgo Beach murders lived in Long Island in plain sight for decades. Rex Huerman was an architect by day, but police say by night he was targeting women in his hidden life as a serial killer. I was reading those charging documents like what Rex was doing. Like I literally was cussing on Twitter because I was like, holy cow, this is so much like my dad. I talk with Carrie Rawson, the daughter of serial killer BTK, about the case. Thanks for joining us here on Law & Crime. I'm Anjanette Levy. Rex Huerman faces charges of first and second degree murder in the deaths of three women found buried in camouflage burlap. The bodies of Megan Waterman, Melissa Bartholomew, and Amber Costello were discovered in 2010 on Long Island's Gilgo Beach. Huerman is a suspect in the death of Maureen Brainerd Barnes, and it's possible more charges could be filed against him. Huerman lived in Massapequa Park on Long Island, traveling into the city each day to work at his Manhattan firm as an architect. He entered a not guilty plea to the charges, and he's innocent until proven guilty. But his arrest has drawn comparisons to Dennis Rader, the BTK serial killer who was arrested in 2005 in Kansas and later confessed to killing 10 people. Rader went to work every day and attended church. He had a family, just like Rex Huerman. I spoke with Raider's daughter, Carrie Rawson, who's an author and an advocate for victims about the Gilgo Beach case. Carrie, when you heard there had been an arrest in the Gilgo Beach case, what went through your mind? So you're glad to hear there's been an arrest. And then instantly I was like, is there a family? And did he have a family? And so then when you're hearing, you know, that, you know, Rex has a wife and kids, you're just instantly like, from my reality, just torn apart. Like, again, it's just like it hits all over again. Um, like, it's like, here we are on another Friday. It's 18 years later. Here's another family going through what, what ours is. And it's like, has anything really changed in culture in 20 years? No. What I find so uh, interesting about this, and it's incredibly sad as well, Rex Huerman is an, an architect going into the city each day. He owns an architectural firm and he's your guy living in the house in suburbia, driving his truck, uh, very similar in some respects to your father. Uh, your father, you know, worked a job and had a, had a career. And it, I, I think the similarities are striking. Did you feel that way? Um, absolutely. I felt the similarities were the same with like Rex and my dad, um, even down to their method of, well, Rex is a suspect. So we have to remember that, but based on correct, he's innocent until proven guilty yet presumption of innocence. Right. But when we're looking at like the charging documents with the bit in the Nobel, um, like down to like method of murder of like, uh, as far as I understand strangulation with, um, you know, Gilgo beach, um, when we're talking at least the four women, the three that have been charged and the one that's coming, I'm sure Maureen, like that's the same method of murder as my father. Um, almost all nine out of 10 were strangulation and the 10th would have been if it hadn't been interrupted. So like down to the method of murder and then the bondage, um, like we're seeing bondage items used with the Gilgo beach, um, women. Um, that was like primarily my dad's method of like torture and leaving these binds sometimes on the women. Um, so my dad's really prolifically known for these, these sort of things like with drawings and Polaroids, um, like seeking out this sort of stuff. And then when you're looking at that list of um, internet searches, you know, that Rex was looking for, like, like if my dad was not in prison now, he would basically like be like Rex right now with like the burner phones and on the internet with these searches. So the differences are though that my father um trolled and stalked like unknown people to him. And then he sometimes didn't even know their name until after they were in the news as being murdered. Um, Rex is, um, as far as we know, focusing on sex workers. And so there, there is a difference of how he communicated and picked his victims, um, like narrowed down on him. But like when I was reading those charging documents, like, 
what Rex was doing. Like I literally was cussing on Twitter because I was like, holy cow, this is so much like my dad. You can imagine uh, like no one else can what his family is going through. You know, do you have any inkling or do you have any feeling about whether or not they ever suspected anything? Because this was on Long Island where they lived. Uh, He's driving the truck that is discussed as being similar to the one involved in the crimes. Um, I get asked a ton, like, you know, do you think the family knew or did your family know? Um, you're seeing like what people are talking about, like, like to the level of criminality of like living with somebody that's like a pathological liar, like <sighs> you're still not jumping from that to thinking that they're like murdering people. Right. So they're, they compartmentalize. And so like, when you're talking about like my, my father, um, he calls it cubing. And so he's, he's showing you what side he wants. And so he's, he's compartmentalizing his whole life. And so he didn't have an, he could murder and then come home and have dinner and you would not necessarily notice any difference. Um, and because he puts that in, he puts that in a he, box per he se. Does. Like, that's his he cue, does. and it goes up on the shelf, and then he goes home, and and the new shelf comes. You know, the new cube comes. Right, down. you're literally flipping a cube, and it can be very fast. Where he's not even setting it on a shelf; he's literally showing you what side, like BTK dad, BTK dad, and he's rolling it really quickly, and he adapts. So if he's talking to you, um, and say you're a law enforcement, he will adjust his body back. He'll be taller. Um, he'll be more reserved. He'll be quieter. Um, you know, law enforcement talk, like, you know, when you're talking to like a law enforcement officer, like how they sound, he mimics that. So besides like walling off and cubing his life, he's literally mimicking himself to you. And so it puts you more at ease because you feel more comfortable. You feel like you're talking to somebody that's similar to you. The women Rex Huerman is accused of murdering vanished between 2007 and 2010. The question remains, if Huerman is indeed the Gilgo Beach serial killer, did he stop killing women for a number of years, essentially going dormant? Well, here's the rub there, okay? So if you look at somebody like my father, um, he was arrested when he was 57. Um, no, no, I'm sorry. He was 60. I'm sorry. My father was arrested when he was 60. My mom was 57. So he's, he was very similar in the same age as Rex being arrested now. Right. My dad was born in 45. My dad's cases go back 31 years. So they span from 1974 to 1991. And we were told there were gaps in there. Okay. Now there's some questions coming up, like, are there cold cases that my dad never claimed? Are there gaps in my dad's life? I would have said up until a few months ago, absolutely, that he stopped and was dormant after 91, because that's what he told law enforcement, right? He pled guilty, like within months to the 10, right? He confessed that first weekend to 10. Now we've got some questions. So if we're trying to apply that logic, can they go dormant? Absolutely. Do they, do they like digress and slow down when they get older? Absolutely. They lose some of that hormonal drive. Do we have any idea right now with Rex? No. And so when people are saying, what do we need to look at? I'm saying from ages like late adolescence, 18 until age 59. So we're talking mid eighties with this guy, low 80, low 1980s till now we've got 40 years. We need to look at at least with just Rex. And then the media, you guys are like telling us like breaking constantly, like, like stuff about South Carolina. And now you're talking about someone's talking about Vegas and then like other properties. We don't even know. Right. Huerman has a wife and children and lived in a modest home, which law enforcement has gone through with a fine tooth comb. As someone who has been in this situation before, learning her father was suspected of killing several people, Carrie Rawson has some words about Huerman's family. Just be patient with the investigation, be patient with like the coverage, and then be respectful. So be respectful to Rex's family and to all like the victims' families. Like 
whatever respect you would give to a victim, crime victim family that's lost somebody, give that to Rex's family. Like automatically just do it. Like don't, like I understand you can, you're going to be pushing back and questioning as media and as public, but until told otherwise, they are victims. Rex Hearman is in the Suffolk County Jail and will be back in court next month. He maintains he did not commit these murders. For Law and Crime, I'm Anjanette Levy.